use Photos for Mac, it's available as an extension to use inside. Now, enabling it is a little bit tricky. To enable the extension, go to your System Preferences and choose Extensions. Then, select the Photos Editing category and make sure that you've placed a checkbox next to Aurora HDR. You might need to quit and relaunch the application in order for it to show up inside of Photos for Mac. Now, you can select the images you want to use and just drag them on the Photos for Mac application icon. From the Import dialog, select your images and choose Import. There we go. Now, we can invoke the extension. Photos for Mac is usually used for single images. If you decide that you want to use an extension, just click the Edit button and then click the Extensions list here and you could choose Aurora HDR. The image is analyzed and handed off. A new instance of Aurora opens up and you'll see it's in a frame called Photos. This is running the plugin inside a floating window. Now, Aurora is actually reading the raw data from the Photos for Mac file, so it'll pull out the most information. That looks really good. If we look at the before and after, it's amazing how much that brought out with just the simple tone mapping of the original RAW file. Look at the details in the sky and the waves. Using HDR Enhance, I'll add a little bit of smart structure. That looks great. And let's take advantage of the adjustable gradient. We can set that there right on the horizon. And I'm just going to pull down the bottom exposure slightly, but bring out the color a little bit more. I like that. And make the beach just a little warmer, so the brownish tones of the sand come out. That looks great. All right. I'll click Save Changes, and the adjustments are stored right inside of Photos for Mac the file will be added back to your Photos for Mac library. But what happens if you have a series of bracketed images? Well, in this case, you're going to, want to hand those off to Aurora in a slightly different way. In this case, I'm going to select these first four images. This last one's really blown out, and I don't think it's going to be needed to make the HDR file. Now, with the four images selected, I'll just right-click and choose Edit With, and then select Aurora HDR from the list. You'll be able to track the progress up here in the upper left corner, and what happens is, is that the files are prepared by Photos for Mac. Once that's done, the images are handed off. You could take advantage of alignment if needed, as well as ghost reduction and chromatic aberration. In this case though, there's no moving subjects, and I was shooting from a tripod, so I'll just click Create HDR. The images are loaded, and a new high dynamic range file is created in 32 bits per channel. Looks good. Let's put a little color contrast in, and use the smart tone controls there. Bring back some detail. We'll recover the highlights just a little bit. I like that. And put a little bit of contrast in. Looks good. Let's use the HDR enhance controls here and put some smart structure in to bring out the sky. And using the HSL controls, I'm going to bring up the saturation of the turquoise in the blue for a richer sky. And use the luminance controls to make the blue areas just a little darker. Looks good. Now, what we can do is save the file. File, save as and I can capture my native project file. And if needed, click the menu here in the upper right corner and just share the image back to Photos. And what that does is generates a new file and hands it off. Let's switch back to Photos for Mac. There it is. And handed it off nicely. I see a little bit of dirt on the lens here because it was a very windy day at the beach. So I'm gonna click Enhance, 
grab the edit tools here, grab our brush, paint over those two little dust spots. It removes them, click done, and the image is added to the library and is updated. Easy enough, and we've captured a new image that shows much more dynamic range than the original.